Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here, welcome back to Gen Sense. Probably not telling you anything you don't know, but fragrances can be expensive. Like, really expensive when you think about it. Because ultimately it's just something that you spray on your body to get a little, little smell action going on. Uh, but they can cost a lot, a whole lot. <laughs> like you can buy one fragrance bottle that costs as much as somebody's monthly house payment uh, or more, depending on how extreme you wanna go with what you're buying. So I posited the question to you guys on the community tab of the YouTube channel. What is the fragrance that you have spent the most on? Your number one most expensive purchase, what was it? And was it worth it? And surprisingly, almost all the answers were, yeah, it was totally worth it and here's what I bought. I was expecting at least like 50-50 with a lot of people saying I spent this much money and then I cried and hated myself right afterwards. But no, most of you were really positive. And so today I have 10 of your answers, the most expensive fragrances that you bought that you thought were worth every single penny. The creme de la creme. And that's what we're talking about here today. If you wanna take part in a future video, check out the community tab of the YouTube channel. I have a question up there. I usually change it every week or so. So you can leave your answer and if it gets a lot of upvotes, it'll go up toward the top and you'll be featured in a future video. So shout out to everybody that took part in this one, everybody that answered, everybody that voted. All the fragrances that I talk about here today will be linked in the description below. And here are some codes right over here. You can use those if you want to save money at these websites. Let's get started with uh, Mr. BJ Southern, who says 220 bucks for Naxos. Kind of kickstarted my journey, so totally worth it. Easily my most complimented fragrance. Ah, Naxos once again, yes. Serge off Naxos seems to come up all the time when we're talking about fragrances for fall or winter or uh, high-end fragrances that pretty much everybody likes. Yeah. For good reason. This stuff is really, really, really nice. It's a great tobacco fragrance, has lavender in here as well. So it's got like a little a fresh tinge to it while still having that, that warm sweetness that you really look for in a pipe tobacco scent. Quality, really nice. Like I said, extremely wearable, good versatility. As Mr. BJ Southern says, big compliment puller as well. They've changed up the presentation style. So this is an old bottle. It won't look like this anymore if you buy a new one. And it also won't have this nice aged tinge to it. Looks like a fine bourbon or something. And 220 bucks for Naxos, not a terrible deal there. It's uh, absolutely worth that amount. One of Zerzhov's best. So Naxos, worth every penny. I agree. Then we got Kevin5498, who says, I bought a 4.2 ounce bottle of Parfums de Marly Greenleaf for 330 bucks plus tax at Nordstrom. Ooh, pricey. And he says, yes. It was totally worth it. I love the fragrance and when I smelled it, I had to buy it on the spot. It's one of my favorites for spring and summer. Gets me great compliments. When I run out and need a replacement though, I'll definitely be buying at a reputable discounter. Yeah, yeah, it's probably, probably for the best. Parfums de Marly, you used to be able to find at pretty much every discounter for a really, really solid discount, but now at some discounters, not all, but at some discounters, they're basically retail. And that's because Parfums de Marly is basically wholesaling to discounters. I did a video talking about that. I think on the extra channel, you could probably just search like, is Parfums de Marly legit? Or is my Parfums de Marly legit? Something like that. Is it fake? Ugh. The answer is no. If you buy at a reputable discount, the answer is no. Back to the fragrance at hand though, Greenly. It is, as you said, really good for spring and summer. Nice compliment puller, good versatility. It's kind of an apple shampoo vibe, a lot of people will say, but still smells great. 330 bucks. Yeah, uh, for me personally, I would want to pick it up for less than that, if at all possible. But you obviously love the fragrance. You don't have any regrets at all. And uh, trust me, I've paid way worse than that at retail for fragrances. So I wouldn't feel bad about it. Not that you do, you said you don't, so. Christian Lopez 488 says, broke college student here. Yeah, I know fragrances can be super expensive, but thankfully clones and cheapies are becoming more widespread. So even somebody like me can get into the fragrance game. And just touching on that really quickly, I've said this before, but I'll say it again really quickly. Uh, if there were as many cheapies and clones readily available when I was younger, I would have been wearing those and buying those nonstop. Back when I was younger and I first started collecting when I didn't have a whole lot of money to spend, it was basically go into a store and buy it at retail. Or if you were lucky, maybe some of the fragrances were like in a clearance bin or clearance shelf and you could pick something up for a little bit less. But if I had access to cheapies and clones and discounters and stuff like are available now, watch out. I would have had just tons of them. Anyway, 
Uh, he says, having said that, the most I've spent on a fragrance was 85 bucks on a Lamal Le Parfum tester. And I love it. I'm just glad I don't have to spend that money all the time. And I think this is really cool because it does highlight that you know, an expensive fragrance to one person may not be expensive to another, but something like this, which 85 bucks is a good amount of money, can be really expensive to some people, which again highlights the need to have high quality, cheaper fragrances available. So that somebody who really likes fragrances and wants to have some and wants to have a variety and wants to smell good, it gives them access to a lot of different things to check out. And so that's one of the reasons that I think cheaper fragrances are important and that you shouldn't just automatically crap on some something because it's not expensive. That's why I try to show love to everything. This one is a good one. And I will say, if you're gonna spend 85 bucks on something, make it something good, and this is something good. So $85 for uh, La Mala Parfum, that's a win. The stuff is fantastic. Fall and winter time, it is a stunner. Great for nights out. Versus Chris is up next, VS Chris, who says 165 for Nishane's Ani. Even though I don't get to wear it often, I think it was worth it. It's a beautiful scent. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, it is a fragrance that I think has good wearability, but it's certainly not as versatile as something like uh, Greenleaf, for example. It's got good push to it, good power, uh, wonderful vanilla fragrance. I also think it smells really nice. And from Discounters, Nishane is a brand that does typically get marked off a pretty good amount. That said, even at 165, I think that's a really good price for this one, especially when you can look at uh, what designer fragrances are going for at full retail nowadays. Some of them are just stupid expensive, just getting close to $200. So, you know, $165 for Ani, yeah, that's not bad. MWGU7BX says, I usually use discounters or eBay, so buying Bleu de Chanel Eau de Parfum was definitely the most I ever spent, and it felt weird paying full retail, but it was worth it. Now, when we're talking Chanel, it's, it's usually actually pretty difficult to get them at a, a heavy discount. If they're discounted too much, then chances are there's something wrong with that bottle or it's fake. Chanel just has really tight grips on their uh, distribution. And so most often you're gonna have to pay retail or really close to retail to pick up a Chanel fragrance. So. With this one, again, I wouldn't feel bad for buying it at retail. I bought my Bleu de Chanel Parfum at retail, Bleu de Chanel Eau de Toilette at retail, this one at retail, I mean, it is what it is. With Chanel, yeah, you're, you're just not gonna get a heavy discount unless you're buying secondhand, typically. And what can we say about Bleu de Chanel Eau de Parfum? It's pretty much one of the most versatile fragrances ever made. Not the most, as far as designers go, especially, which, Designers are more versatile than niche typically, so I guess just all fragrances in general. Don't really know why I specified designers there. Yeah, it's, it's a great smelling scent. It's classy, but at the same time can be worn casually, just about any season, daytime, nighttime. It's Blue de Chanel. The next selections come to us from Chris Chio 9932 who says, I'm pretty sure the most I've spent on a fragrance was the day I bought Creed Aventus for $340 and Silver Mountain Water for $300 the same day at the same place. That's a big purchase, dropping a lot of money there. I paid cash, so they didn't charge me tax. How does that work? So I guess I saved some money there. This was also in 2013, I believe, and at retail. It was absolutely 100% worth it. There was nothing like Aventus at the time, true. And Silver Mountain Water is one of my signatures, so no regrets there. Oof, you still had that bottle of Aventus from 2013, that'd be worth some money nowadays. I mean, Aventus in general is expensive, but if you have a vintage bottle of Aventus going back at this point, a decade, yeah, somebody would pay some money for that. So these are two of the heavy hitters from Creed, and actually a bunch of people had Creed fragrances as the expensive scent they bought that was worth every penny. I saw Aventus numerous times. I saw Green Hours Tweed, Silver Mountain Water a few times. Uh, those actually seem to be the ones that popped up the most often. And it makes sense. For a lot of people, Creed is the house that kind of gets them started on niche fragrances. Maybe over time that shifted a little bit toward Parfums de Marly, where it used to be Creed. But if we're talking, you know, five plus years ago, it was Creed. That was really the place that people started most often because the fragrances are higher quality, but they're still designer-ish, right? So they can give you that versatility that a designer fragrance would, but it smells more exclusive, higher end. And these two, at this point, have been cloned to death, especially Ventus. But when they first came out, they they were definitely gonna have you standing out from the crowd, that's for sure. Ben5471 says nearly $400 
for Raja Parfums Burlington 1819. Wore it when we got engaged and am still enchanted by the scent. And I don't think I'd sell it for anything. In typical Raja Parfum fashion, there are like 50,000 notes to the fragrance, but uh, when you really boil it down, this one is a, a very high-end smelling citrus scent. It's very clean and also classy, has just the right amount of sweetness. You have a, a little bit of a boozy touch to it, but not an overload. You get that Raja Parfum sparkle to it, a little bit of a warm spice, fresh spice, mix just really well done and yes $400 is expensive but it does smell extremely high in terms of quality. Hi, Nate 5292 says, I haven't spent as much as most people here, but at the time I was working at Yonkers in their fragrance department and my favorite fragrance was YSL's Loam Eau de Toilette. So I bought the gift set that had two full-size bottles and a 1.4 ounce size bottle for travel. I think it was like 120 at the time, 2014 or 2015, he says. Would love to find that deal again today since it's still my favorite fragrance. Yeah, I mean, 120 bucks for a circa 2014, maybe 2015 triple bottle set of loam. Yeah, yeah, I would like to find that too nowadays. You say they were a 3.3 ounce size bottle, so you got two 3.3 ounces and one 1.4 ounce for 120 bucks. That is just, that's a sick deal. If that popped up nowadays, I'm not even sure what that would go for, for a 2014 vintage with three bottles in it, but it, it wouldn't be 120. This one is a great scent. I've talked about it a bunch of times. The performance is so-so, but the fragrance itself smells really nice. It's got an appealing opening, good amount of ginger in there, citrus as well. Almost blue fragrancy to an extent in terms of the versatility of that one. Good compliment puller also. Really solid fragrance and 120 bucks, as I've said a number of times, that's just, that's a great deal for that. Sean Buksanovic 102 says, I spent $140 on a 75 mil PDM Layton and yes, it was worth it. Tons of compliments. It smells like nothing in my collection and I have 64 colognes. Five more and you'll be at a pristine number and you can just call it quits at that point. Plus, it's not a bad price for a niche scent. I paid $120 for my Bleu de Chanel. Again, you can't really find that discounted, uh, which I do love, but the Layton is way more bang for your buck. And yes, $140 for a 75 mil size bottle of Layton. That's a pretty nice deal. I like it. Kind of goes back to what I was saying with Greenlee. Uh, used to be available pretty much everywhere for a really big discount. Not as much nowadays, but you can still find discounts for it. Layton nowadays does have a ton of clones. Uh, Dusk from the Woods Collection, uh, Detour Noir from Haramain being two of uh, my favorites. But there is something about just Layton itself. You know, the real deal, the Mac Daddy here. For fall and winter time, one of the best things you can rock with if you're just looking for a fragrance that people are gonna love that has good performance. Layton gets it done. I'm gonna do one bonus one, so we'll technically have 11 different answers on here. Uh, the next one's from Adam Trueblood5938, who says, I paid retail for Amour Oud's Lunar Vetiver. It was $220. After I sampled, I knew I had to have it immediately. It's actually my scent of the day today, and I love it. I'm a sucker for a good vetiver fragrance. I mean, I really do enjoy myself some vetiver. Do hate how this happens, but the uh, collar sometimes comes off get stuck inside the cap. But what are you gonna do? Now, vetiver is a note that scares some people away, but again, it smells great. This one has a really fresh, clean, woody vetiver with kind of nutty undertones to it. So when you smell it, you get like the colors of dry grass kind of popping up in your mind, uh, but with fresh overtones. Just a really wearable one that's a good office fragrance. Another one that you could wear in more classy situations or casually as well. And I had to bring this one up when I saw it. It's from Mourn for the Lost 96 who says, I believe Lair du Desert Marocaine was the most I've personally paid for a fragrance at like 150 after tax and shipping. Well worth it. And the entire reason I want to feature this one is just so I can uh, have an excuse to, really, to smell it. Yeah. I, I do hate the the cap situation on tower fragrances. I'm not a big fan because it has like these little rubber bands kind of that sit underneath the atomizer and you kind of got to squeeze the cap down over them. And it, it, sometimes it's a mess. Bottle itself looks cool though. That's one of my all time favorite fragrances just in terms of how it smells. Now, is it as wearable as 
pretty much anything else here? Probably not, no. Some people would dispute that and be like, nah, you can wear that anytime, anywhere. But if you go up to like some average Joe, right? And you say, okay, here, smell Aventus, now smell this, right? Which one would you wear more often? Or Bleu de Chanel or uh, Le Mal or any of these others? Yeah. That's kind of what I mean. Fragrance person, uh, sure, they'll <laughs> wear it more often. But to be fair, I guess if you're buying that, you probably are a fragrance person. It smells awesome. Very warm, spicy. It's just like close to the pinnacle of warm, spicy fragrances with a great woody, resinous base. Uh, it's just top notch. And the price, honestly, is a steal. This at retail is an amazing deal. So there we go, guys. Those are the fragrances that you said are worth every penny, your most expensive purchase. And looking at all of these, I don't think there's a single one that I would say, oh, don't buy that. Pretty much all of this, especially at the price that you can get most of these for at discounters or even at full retail, they are worth every penny. Thank you guys for hanging with me. Thank you everyone that took part. Stay safe out there, guys, and I will see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.